Hello, StarCraft family. Welcome back to the Star Cafe. This is Nur Star speaking, your personal uh, Star Barista. And once again, we are ready to serve you with some very special StarCraft content. So guys, uh, we are going to start the week at the Star Cafe in a very similar way to how we finished uh, the previous one, as we are going to talk about uh, on-chain gaming and uh, autonomous worlds. In fact, last Friday, we had the pleasure to host uh, um, the, the members, the, the member from uh, the, the winning project of the recent uh, Dojo Hackathon. And we also had the, the, the pleasure to host uh, uh, somebody, uh, uh, Ward from, uh, from uh, Cartridge. And uh, we talked about the, the Hackathon, this, uh, the uh, Dojo uh, Gaming uh, Hackathon, the Dojo Gem. It was the first edition, and uh, uh, we also had uh, Chillax from uh, Zenite, and uh, we spoke about uh, uh, this project, this interesting game that was developed uh, in only three days, and um, and then we also talked about the the other um, uh, the other gaming uh, projects that uh, were submitted uh, during uh, the hackathon, and uh, well, today we also have the pleasure to uh, to have a Ben Ben Jov from uh, from WASD, which is a, a, a publication and a newsletter about uh, on-chain gaming and uh, autonomous words. And uh, I'm a, a very frequent reader of both his, uh, his publications from uh, WASD. And uh, I also remember his uh, great work uh, at Bankless as uh, both writer and analyst. So I'm very happy to, uh, to have uh, Ben here. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to uh, speaking about on-chain gaming and Ben's views on the StarkNet uh, gaming scene. And before uh, uh, greeting him, I would love also to thank all the live listeners and uh, I mean, to all of you who, who are listening uh, to this episode on YouTube. Do not forget to uh, subscribe to our channel. And also for those listening to the Twitter space, you will find a lot of links uh, in the comment section. Uh, uh, links to the was the publications and also to the um, to the last uh, Star Cafe with uh, uh, with uh, Z Knights. But yeah, uh, without further ado, let's introduce the guest from uh, today for today. Uh, hello, Ben. How are you? Welcome to the Star Cafe. Hey, hey, G GM everyone. Um, GM uh, Nurse, sir. Thank thank you so much for. Uh for that very kind intro and for having me on. Uh, it's really great to really great to be here to kick off the week. Absolutely, it's, uh, it's my pleasure. And uh, yeah, it's been a while I wanted, to, I wanted to bring you to the Star Cafe and we finally uh, made it. So yeah, uh, what about uh, uh, breaking the ice, you know, by telling us your uh, background, uh, your first uh, experiences uh, in uh, your uh, crypto journey and also uh, how did you come up with, uh, with the WASD idea and I also suppose that you are a gaming enthusiast, so it will be nice to hear about your passion for gaming as well. And yeah, this kind of uh, introductory stuff How about you. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, kind, kind of, kind of um, like like you had referenced, I I first got into crypto um, back around like uh, during during COVID. Um, so. I, I I essentially uh, like during COVID, you know, everyone was like locked locked in their their houses. Um, so, you know, like I I had kind of been into like uh, stocks beforehand, and like I, I was really confused why like they kept going up during during COVID. So that kind of, that kind of got me to uh, you know like start start researching the uh, kind of kind of like the the monetary system and 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 kind of realize like what a what a sham uh, the the fiat system is. Um, and so, so after that, I kind of found, found Bitcoin and then Ethereum and, and then just like, I'm, I'm sure all of you just got completely obsessed with it and it took over my life and, uh, <laughs> still, still has to, to this day. Um, yeah, so I, I, I first kind of started sort of working crypto then in, uh, May of 2021. Um, I was in a, I was in college at the time and I had started a, uh, crypto club at my my school and it happened to be the same school that uh david hoffman from from bankless went to um so i, I kind of met him through there and he uh he offered me the chance to write um write for bankless so i uh 
wrote, wrote some articles for them and then um, kind of started working full time there in uh, February 2022 um, after after I graduated school. Um, I worked there for about like full time for about like a year and a half um, and kind of at the beginning of like 2023, I, I really got uh, interested in um, in gaming. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd always like played played video games um, kind of grow, growing up. And I'd, I'd always, uh, always, always love them. They're always like a great, great outlet, a, a ton of fun, a good way to like, uh, get, get like my like competitive to scratch, like my like competitive itch. Um, cause I was kind of like, I liked playing sports, but I was like kind of shitty at them. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the, it was, it was, um, yeah, I'd, I'd always been into video games. And, and so I, like, I, I kind of thought, okay, the, uh, the inner, like, the idea that crypto can be used to like enhance gaming, create like new gaming experience, like kind of um, resonated sort of sort of easily with me. Um, and then I uh, eventually I, I was, I was kind of into like a uh, web, I, I guess like what web three gaming, like not fully on chain games at, at first. Then like I kind of uh, I actually had a friend at Etherway um, who works on the influence uh, team, which is a, a big big Starknet game that I'm sure you guys know and that we'll, we'll get into, uh, I imagine later. Um, he, uh, was, you know, like I, he, he kind of introduced me to, to on-chain games and I sort of fell down that, that rabbit hole. Um, and eventually I, I, I kind of saw like, okay, there's not like a ton of content being made about, uh, about on-chain games and autonomous worlds. And I, um, you know, I, I wanted to focus on that full time. So I decided to leave, uh, leap bankless and then start, uh, WASD and, um, yeah, kind of, kind of the, the rest is history from there. Um, so yeah, that, that's my, my long, uh, long, long background story about, about myself and how I, how I ended up, uh, where I am. Awesome, Ben. Uh, thanks, a, thanks a lot for sharing it. And uh, it's also nice to see that, you know, uh, a passion of yours, such as gaming, you know, uh, uh, intertwined with, um, you know, with your latest, uh, let's say, uh, job or, and also passion, I suppose, which was, uh, you know, crypto. So the, the two things came together and uh, it is always interesting when uh, stuff like that happens in, in life, you know, and uh, because it seems as if the dots are connecting uh, to each other, right? So yeah, that, that was very, uh, very nice. And uh, before uh, speaking specifically about the StackNet uh, gaming scene, I would also like to have a, a, a general uh, you know, discussion about uh, on-chain gaming and the autonomous world, which is one of the most talked uh, um, uh, primitive uh, in, the, in, the la- in the last year, I would say, when it comes to, to crypto. And uh, there is a lot of uh, interest around it from both you know, the, the users, uh, the investment funds, and the, all the players involved. And so I would like to know uh, why is, uh, uh, you know, is, is on-chain gaming and the autonomous world the talk of the town lately? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I, 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 th- I think like, I don't know. I, I, I'd say it's a combination of like a few factors. One is that like, I think like it's a very kind of inspiring vision uh, and like optimistic vision for like the future. Um, it's like the idea that we can create kind of these new, uh, these new worlds where um, people can, you know, like interact and kind of spend their time in um, that are kind of more, more fair, uh, more open, um, kind of more composable than like the kind of like our off chain worlds um and so i i i think it's like it's a it's a pretty optimistic and like cool and kind of kind of inspiring vision um so i i think there's that i i also think like i don't know there, there's it's it's not just like all pie in the the sky um like with, with was I, I try to focus a lot on like the games that are like kind of like live today and uh like or like being close to like being close to la- launching on like a test net or uh, mainnet, um, so there's like a bunch of games that you can play uh, play today, and they're like they're so, some of them are pretty fun, um, and it, it, it's uh, like they're they're all very impressive. Like the fact that you can like build uh, like a game on chain is, is like 
really cool. And, um, but there's like a lot of like people always say, oh, there's no fun crypto games. But that that's just like not, I, I think, true, like especially when it comes to on-chain gaming. Um, like there's been a bunch of different games that I've, I've played that are like a lot of fun. And um, like they're uh, – it, it 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 to 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 sum it up like it's it's not just like a you know like an abstract concept um like there's a and I think this gets like really lost in like the discussion uh from like people who aren't like really deep in the on chain gaming world it's like there's there's a bunch of fun games that you can play today um and I'm I'm sure we'll talk about plenty of them both both in in Starknet and in like Mud and some of the other uh, other other ecosystems um. So, so I, I'd say it's like a combination of just like a cool, like inspiring vision for the future, um, which is especially needed given that like you know we're deep in a bear market and like the vibes on on Twitter are like really horrible, um, and everyone's miserable and and really cynical and um, it's not not a fun not not a fun place to be right now. Um, so I think it's that, and I think also it's like oh, it's not like people are beginning to realize oh, there's actually like games out there today that have like a lot of potential absolutely yeah i completely agree with you and um yeah it's also like uh, uh, gaming is that kind of stuff that also goes beyond the speculation because um, obviously one of the uh, crucial points of gaming is uh, making you having fun right so that also goes beyond the uh, speculation, the thought of making money at any cost. And it's also just a way to make you relax uh, and, you know, uh, uh, and do this kind of stuff. And also doing it together with friends and making friends in the process, which, are, which is also a big part of gaming, right? So, uh, yeah, that, that also makes me uh, very bullish. And you also uh, mentioned uh, about uh, Dojo and Matt. And uh, for those who don't know it, you know, Dojo is uh, uh, one of the most important pieces of infrastructure on Starknet. And it is a, a gaming uh, tool chain and framework used to build games on Starknet. Meanwhile, uh, there's also Matt that was also mentioned by Ben, which is a... Uh, uh, the kind of equivalent, uh, you know, of Dojo, but for EVM chains. And uh, yeah, uh, am I am I speaking right, uh, Ben? Could you also uh, tell us the difference between uh, uh, Dojo and Mad? And also speaking a bit about uh, Mad, because obviously we are more uh, Starknet focused, but it's also uh, nice to know a bit more from you know from uh, uh, from other ecosystems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I, I should say, like, I'm, I'm not a dev, so I, I'm sure there's a ton of, like, uh, technical differences that I, I couldn't, uh, <laughs> could, couldn't, couldn't tell you what they are. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'd say, like, the main kind of, kind of from, a, like, a player perspective, like, the main, the main difference is that, um, yeah, like, like you said, like, Dojo is native to, like, StarkNet, Mud, uh, can be you can build something on mod and every single uh ebm uh ebm chain um yeah i i think like their their underlying designs like it seems like there are like a bunch of similarities between the two just from me me reading their docs um like they both use kind of like this uh big uh like world contract that helps or maybe it's the store there's like this one contract that helps like that like houses like all of like the game logic that makes it like really easy for um kind of uh like the developers to manage the the state of the game um i i guess like the main kind of kind of differences would be like the uh at least at least from like a player player perspective um player and dgen perspective which is always what i i like to which is what i am so that that's like what i what i kind of view things from um are really like the like the big games on on each of them. Um, so on Mud, I, I'd say like uh, you know like some some of the big games there are uh, Sky Strife, um, which is developed by the Lattice team. Uh, Pri- Primodium um, that that's probably one of my new new favorites. I was playing. I was at a I was at a conference last week, um, and I uh, the thing I did the most there was play play Primodium um, to the point where like my my friends that I was staying with were like you've barely gone to the actual conference, <laughs> so, which, which is kind of true. Um, Cause I, I, I had work, but I, I also had a, 
I, I was kind of like addicted to Primodium. Um, and then uh, another big mud game is uh, Words Three, um, Kamigachi. There, there's a bunch of uh, others, and I uh, a bit of, bit of a, a self waz shield is that we we've written a bunch, a, a lot about uh, the mud game, so you should definitely check out our pieces on those. Um, on, uh, on on Starknet, I, I'd say like the big games there are. Um, you have a uh, loot survivor, which is a part of the the realms ecosystem, which I uh, it is a really cool ecosystem that I'm sure we'll 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 talk about a lot. Um, so you have a uh, loot survivor, uh, you have influence. Um, both of those are on are on testnet um, in in some capacity. Um, there's also brick, which I might be my favorite uh, kind of Starknet game, or at least a Starknet primitive, um, which essentially it's like. Uh, it's kind of like on-chain Legos. So it's like an, an NFT project where you can like build different like uh, creations with like vo- voxel blocks, um, and then you you can mint that as an NFT, and then people who buy that NFT can like disassemble those blocks and create something else or build something to add on top of it. Um, it it's 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 really cool. Um, then um, yeah, n- another cool game is a uh, roll your own, which is a uh, kind kind of like I think I think it's based off of. Um, this game called uh, Drug Wars, which is I, I never played it, um, but it's kind of like a a, a, a drug dealing RPG. Um, and I always loved GTA growing up, so I I, I always like a crime 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 games and crime movies and shows and and all that. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say like there's the main differences are like the like from a player perspective, or like the types of games that are that are out there. Um, and there, there's really cool games in like both both ecosystems I'm, de- I'm definitely very bullish on uh on both that's great yeah there's also like influence that uh, you you mentioned uh, earlier and um yeah maybe we'll be speaking about it uh, later on and uh, i also wanted to ask you a, a question about both uh, lattice and uh, autonomous words because yeah uh, i also saw from uh, your recent uh, newsletters that uh, you had this uh, addiction to primordium and uh, and you also mentioned uh, uh, lattice a lot of times but to be honest i didn't grasp the you know the the concept of lattice uh, i didn't understand whether it is a, a you know a zk vm for gaming or it is just an autonomous words team a team working on on-chain gaming or or, or something else yeah, yeah. So L- Lattice is just a yeah. They're they're just a team. They're they're kind of the team that uh, like helped uh, or is is, hel- is helping build uh, Mud. Um, and uh, they're also building a game I mentioned earlier, uh, Sky Strife. Um, and they built uh, OP Craft as well, which was like a uh, fully on chain Minecraft on an OP stack chain. Uh, I think it came out almost a year ago at this point. Um, but it's it's not out now. It was only live for uh, for two weeks. Um, so yeah, L- Lattice is just a uh, they're a, they're a team. Well understood. And uh, well, we could also like uh, put into definition uh, like uh, the autonomous world thing because many people, you know, uh, still uh, are still uh, wondering what people mean with uh, autonomous world. And I remember listening. Uh, to uh, a gaming focused Twitter space, also in order to be to get prepared for for our talk, and uh, there were like uh, love from uh, Lutrians talking about uh, uh, autonomous world, and uh, he, he managed to explain uh, uh, this concept in very easy words, which were the following: that autonomous world, an autonomous world is like a public uh, uh, network where different games can be built on it and these games can interact with that would you agree with uh, such a definition yeah yeah i i, I think I'd, i i think i'd agree with that um yeah i mean i it, it, it's definitely a hard uh like term to define um like i i have sort of like a general idea in my head of what it is but there's not like a clear like dictionary definition of it i i've heard like a bunch of people have like different interpretations uh of it um but i i'd I'd say like overall it's it's yeah it's like kind of like a world that sort of lives on chain um that like can can contain you know a bunch of different games and i I think like the 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 part i think is interesting is the uh the autonomy part because i feel like to me i view that as like a world um that essentially can uh there's one quote from a 
Ludens, who's um, part of a Xerox Park and the Lattice team, who uh, who said like like a worlds that can like outlive their or that can be like free of their like gods. Um, so I essentially view that as like a world that like exists on chain because it's on chain, you know, like it inherits all the property of a blockchain so it can like sort of last for as long as the blockchain exists, but it also does not have like one creator that's, or one ruler that's like dictating all the rules um, down from the, the top. If, if that makes sense. It does, it does, yeah. And uh, well, uh, Ben, before going on with our uh, very interesting uh, conversation about uh, on-chain gaming and uh, autonomous worlds, I would love to shout out to our live listeners and to to all the listeners out there. So hello, I eat daily, Kakujat from uh, Lurri Arms, Exodus, Kodawari, Buremo, Hash, Wasp, and Julian. So thanks a lot, guys, for being here. And remember that you can find uh, a lot of information about uh, uh, WASD on the comments uh, below. So make sure to follow uh, WASD on Twitter, WASD and Ben on Twitter, and also subscribe to their uh, Mirror uh, newsletter. Having said that, Ben, well, uh, we were speaking about some uh, StackNet uh, projects already. You mentioned uh, a bunch of them. and. Uh, well, could we also like uh, mention uh, other games that like uh, uh, influence? Uh, also, like uh, what do you think of games uh, uh, such as uh, uh, Cafe Cosmos, which looks uh, uh, very promising? And um, well, I would also like to discuss what do you think about uh, uh, in the in, especially in the future about the importance of uh, local games in the sense that, uh, like f- speaking from home experience. I met some very talented builders from like community, especially communities, especially from Asia. And we also had like uh, uh, John from uh, the island, which is a game uh, uh, being developed from a uh, you know Vietnamese community. And uh, I'm very uh, very interested, uh, fascinated by also the uh, the local uh, potential of games, right? Where games can uh, can be a very uh, fast adoption in some parts of the world. And uh, so I'm also bullish on games uh, such as the, the islands that uh, will be um, will be spreaded around a specific uh, uh, geographic area. So yeah, le- uh, le- let's speak about these uh, these games that uh, we didn't mention earlier. Yeah, yeah, I um, yeah, I I, I think uh, just just going off of that that last point, I I I think. Uh, yeah, it's 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 very interesting as well. Like the idea of um, creating like uh, I don't, I, the the global nature of like crypto. Like you can have sort of uh, games like be built um, like for like like the games themselves are like global, so they live on like a blockchain for anyone to be able to interact with. Um, but you know, like with that in mind, you can have dev teams from like all over the all over the world. Um, which I, I I think is like really uh re- really really interesting and um yeah re- really cool I I know like I've gone to travel a bunch and like conferences and like I I had no idea like until I did that the like how global crypto uh how global crypto was I, I know it's a bit of a, uh, a a side tangent um what what was can you do you mind repeating what the first what the game you uh you mentioned was um at the beginning of your question. Yeah, yeah, the games was uh, like uh, speaking a bit about influence that you also have some connection there, and also about uh, Cafe Cosmos. I don't know if you if you run uh, into it. Oh yeah, 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 um, yeah. Cat, cat, Cafe Cosmos. Um, I think they're they're like a uh, like a restaurant, uh, a restaurant RPG, um, which I, I I think is pretty cool. It's like you'll um, kind of go in. You'll have your own restaurant, and your goal is to like kind of grow, grow the restaurant and like become like a, like a restaurant mogul. <laughs> um, I guess I, I know they're, uh, I watched like a couple, I, I don't believe they're playable yet. Um, but I've watched a couple of the talks with, um, I forget his name. Uh, the, 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 fa- the founder of the project. Nico. Nico. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Nico. yeah. And, um, he was essentially talking about how there's going to be like this, like interesting kind of like market based play to earn, uh, kind of mechanism um which is based on like i'm trying to remember the details like the supply and demand like within like the game economy 
for for like different like goods i believe or um yeah there's there's some sort of like mark market-based mechanism for like play to earn um which i i think is like pretty pretty interesting and and um i'm curious to see how that will like fare relative to kind of something like uh like axie where it was just we're just emitting all this sop and this is the emission rate and and that um yeah, I, I know. Uh, I know. I know. Influence, um, kind of circling back to them. They're a. Uh, they're kind of building a um, MMO RPG, like a space kind of themed MMO RPG. So you'll. Um, it takes place in like an asteroid belt, and you'll um, essentially like your your goal is to like accumulate like sway, which is this uh, kind of in game in game currency, and you can do that by like you know, like mining like resources and, and like uh, battling other ships and, and um, they're kind of like a space, space conquer. I, I, th- I think uh, it, it seems like there's some similarities to a, uh, to Primodium as well. Now that I, I talk about it out loud. Um, and uh, I'm really excited for that game, that game as well. Um, because like, I, I, I think it's like really interesting to where you can have games where it's like, 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 essentially, where it's like, okay, we're in combat, and you know, we're, we, I have a ship, the other players have a ship, we battle, and then, um, they lose their ship, and or like, I, I destroyed their ship, and then like, their ship is just like gone, um, and I, I think like, when you can combine like that with a like kind of real world like value that like crypto provides, um, I think that could be like really interesting, um, like imagine you have like a. Uh, because each each ship and in influence, I believe, is or like like each like ship and like players like represented by like an NFT. Um, so imagine if you have like two two ships battling that are worth like you know like ten thousand dollars each, and then like you destroy someone else's ship, it's like you're destroying ten thousand dollars of of value for them, which I, I think like is just really like as like the the stakes of these these games um and i also think like does pose some like interesting like ethical kind of dilemmas as well um so yeah i'm i'm really excited to see like see influence and um yeah i believe they're on testnet in like a limited pretty limited capacity but i think they're launching soon um i'm not 100% sure when but um I think they're launching soon and their, their discord's like very active. Um, so I, uh, they have a lot of docs. So I, I definitely recommend checking it out. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing, uh, uh influence be launched on mainnet. And I also think it won't uh, take, uh, uh, that long to happen. And, um, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for sharing also your views on, uh, also on, uh, Cafe Cosmos. Yeah. You were right, uh, uh, by saying that, uh, it, it is a tycoon game where you can build your, uh, uh like a restaurant uh, chain in a, in a galaxy. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very fun. And also the animals of the game have their own, uh, characters. And uh, for those who would be interested uh, in uh, in digging a bit more uh, a bit more on Cafe Cosmos, I left uh, the link of our of our Star Cafe in the comment section. And uh, yeah, also Nico is a very fun guy, and he always managed to you know to uh, to explain the game in a in a fun and entertaining uh, way. And also the the design is uh, is very promising. Their artist is is very talented. So I'm really looking forward to to being able to to play with uh, with the game and doing uh, you know a sort of uh, uh, star cafe in there, and uh, yeah, so very uh, very excited about that. And uh, yeah, uh, having said that, Ben, like uh, let's let's turn a bit towards the uh, infrastructure um, uh, point of on-chain gaming and autonomous worlds. So by um, by reading your publications, I also saw that you you dig a bit on some features that are being uh, experimented uh, on uh, on uh, on chain gaming games, and like uh, the like session keys, banner wallets. Uh, what are you seeing uh, in uh, in the scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I I'd say um, yeah, the the uh, kind of the the wallet. Uh, the, the wallets are, are a big one, um, kind of kind of like you mentioned. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it both both in a Starknet uh, like with with Dojo and and Mud. Um, there's like a, 
a lot of really interesting kind of um, wa- wallet tech, I guess, for, for lack of a better term, that's being used. Um, so, so like you said, uh, yeah, burner wallets. Um, these are, I think, being used in, in StarkNet and uh, and MUD. Um, so, a, a, essentially, what a burner wallet is is it's like a wallet that um, like is generated when you like open like a website um, and it's stored kind of like locally in your browser. Um, so it's uh, essentially, let's say I'm, I'm playing a game. I go to the game site. When I click on it, it automatically generates a wallet for me and it stores that in my, uh, in my browser. Um, so what, what that kind of provides you is like a lot of like really cool affordances. So uh, essentially like number one, kind of the first thing that jumps out is like, you don't have to download and like connect a wallet to start playing, um, which, you know, like I, I think like, I don't have a problem with connecting a wallet um, but you know, like for your, your average, uh, like your average normie like, prop might not have a wallet or might not want to like have to figure out how to download MetaMask and then bridge from an exchange to MetaMask and, and deal with all, all that, uh, all that, all that stuff. Um, so I think like it really improves like the onboarding, uh, experience. Um, so there, there's that, um, it also like enables, uh, kind of transaction, sort of free or signature free gameplay. Um, so essentially um, what it means is that like, because like, like burner wallets sort of have the, the ability to uh, sign transactions on your behalf. Um, like not, not like every, like, they can't do like everything. Like they can't like, you know, like take your funds and, and ape it into some random like yield farm. Um, but they can, they can sign transactions on your behalf while you're playing a game. Because in a lot of these on-chain games, like every every move you make, every like turn you have is like a uh, a, a transaction. Um, so with with burner wallets, it's like they can sign transactions for you. So that means like you don't have to click confirm on on a your 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 browser wallet every single time you want to um, do something in the game. So that that really makes the games like a lot uh, a lot more fun and a lot smoother to uh, to play. Um, and in uh, in some cases as well. Uh, burner wallets like um like with the game uh called called pirate nation which is on arbitrum nova um they they essentially let like uh dev teams pay sort of gas fees for you um so you don't have to pay any gas when when you play um that you know i i don't know how sustainable like a solution that is like i'm I'm not like super bullish on that um as like a, a concept but i i do think it um is like another another cool cool feature, um, and I, I know uh, with with Starknet, there's um like it enables like account abstraction kind of kind of natively, um, so it's really easy for teams to be able to like spin up uh, burner wallets and wallets with like all those capabilities that I that I just described. Um, so that that's one of like the really big uh, really big ones, and like I, I think like that's um, could be like a model like. That, that we see be utilized for like a lot of different apps um, and not just, not just on chain games. Um, another big one is, uh, um, I guess this is, this is not as applicable to, to StarkNet per se, but um, are kind of like a uh, roll apps. Um, so like a lot of, a lot of games are being built on um, their own kind of OP stack L2 um, or are being built with something like World Engine or Pima or Keystone, which lets you create your own kind of custom, uh, custom rollup that's like optimized specifically for uh, for building an, an on-chain game. Um, so those are kind of two of the two of the big uh, infrastructure um, infrastructure infrastructure uh, kind of things that we're we're seeing. I'm, I'm sure there's like plenty plenty others um, as well. That if you, if you ask devs, I, I'm sure they could. Give a give a whole uh, whole laundry list of them, but it, but I, as a player, those are kind of like the two two big things that I uh, I notice. All right, Ben. Yeah, as you said, non crypto gamers just wanna play, you know, and have fun, and they don't want to get busy with the crypto sides of uh, uh, of these uh, you know games. But uh, yeah, uh, account abstraction finally enables us. To you know, to cut down on this uh, adoption friction, you know, when it comes to wallet as well, 
and uh, yeah, session wallets, banner wallets, uh, which are basically uh, the same thing, right? When we speak about uh, uh, banner wallets and session wallets, because I remember session wallets was a term they used to be used a bit more, but recently I've been hearing about you know uh, banner wallets more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think uh, yeah. I feel like the terminology is uh, I don't know with, with a lot of this infra stuff. It uh, it it, it changes a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, bur burner wallets is kind of the term that I've heard used. I, I know also uh, arcade accounts. Um, I believe loaf from realms uh, coined that term. I I think my understanding is like it's a it's a very similar uh concept for like burner wallets on uh starknet um but yeah there's a bunch of different bunch of different terms uh that are used but i i think uh overall it's like the benefits are like really uh with that are like really clear and it, it, it like makes it so like like you could send someone a link to like a game and uh like an on-chain game that uses it and like they wouldn't necessarily know that it even is like an on-chain game which i think is uh is is pretty cool um I'm, I'm not one of those people who like believes like oh you need to get rid of all the crypto parts of a of a dap for people to use it um like i i i don't i don't believe in the idea of oh you have to hide like you have to just make the crypto components of an app like invisible i i don't really believe that is going to be like the winning thesis but it, it is nice like with the game just to be able to like send it to someone and have them easily be able to get like onboarded without needing to go through all these like bells and whistles to start playing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And uh, well, um, account abstraction, you know, will, uh, will enable a lot of uh, very uh, uh, users friendly uh, features, such as the, the ones you, you mentioned. And uh, uh, like, um, uh, for example, uh, we also saw like uh, uh, mail wallets coming, uh, coming over, but yeah, uh, le uh, uh, let's switch a bit uh, uh, towards the uh, the end of our episode. But yeah, uh, now I also remember uh, about, uh, you know, let's speak a bit about uh, these uh, uh, app chains, you know, uh, these games that are uh, being developed on uh, app chains, because this is also a thing that is taking place uh, in Starknet. An example is uh, Tsubasa, which is a, a football uh, card game, which is being developed on um, Madara. Uh, the Starknet, a, star, a very uh, next generation Starknet uh, sequencer. So yeah, we are seeing this uh, this trend of gaming projects building their own uh, uh, app chains, uh, you know, both on Starknet and also on other uh, EVM uh, uh, scanning solutions. So I think this is also the uh, you know it will be a, a very uh, very frequent thing in the in in the near future. Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I definitely agree with that. Cool. Uh, well, Ben, we are coming to the end of our uh, Star Cafe, and uh, I must say I had a, a great time speaking to you about on-chain gaming and autonomous world. We can notice that you have a, a big knowledge, big saving knowledge about uh, this topic, and you know, I, I suggest to all the listeners to follow uh, WAST and read uh, uh, its publications. And uh, yeah, there's also one, the, the last one is about Shoshin. So make sure to, to read that. And I uh, also would love to thank all the live listeners for, for coming uh, today at the Star Cafe. And yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Ben. Hopefully I'll see you soon at the Star Cafe once again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me on. It was, it was really great to, really great to be here. Um, and really great to, yeah, chat chat about on chain games. They're they're a ton of fun. It's a really awesome, uh, awesome little corner of, of crypto. Um, so yeah, thank thank you for uh, thank you for having me. It was, it was great. Very cool, uh, Ben. Thanks a lot, and uh, see you soon. So guys, uh, it's time to close. Remember to share the Stacknet vibe, and see you the next time. Bye guys. Bye Ben. Cheers. Mm -hmm.